I can still remember that day so distinctly. I was driving in my car, heading back from the post office. I had just received a box full of 31 baby geese, and I was coming back to the farm. And it was the start of a new business venture for us here at Goldshaw Farm. Last year we raised about 40 ducks. We harvested most of the males for meat. We kept most of the females for laying eggs. It is 11 degrees out right now, and I just went into the duck house, and I found an egg, my first egg. We kept a couple of males for future generations. And it was a very good starter experience. But my aspiration with raising these geese was to create a new business for the farm, something that could be profitable and something that could be a part of us sustaining ourselves on farm income. You know, all winter I had been making this plan and trying to come up with all the ways that I would build out this business. I figured out a marketing approach. I figured out a sales model. I crunched the numbers to make sure it worked. And I really think I had all the angles figured out when it came to the geese. But there was one area that I still hadn't quite figured out by the time the geese had arrived, processing. Last year we processed our ducks on farm and it was an okay experience. I'm really glad I did it. But I know that for the long haul and for my ability to produce a professional product that I can really market and sell, I really wanted to find a processor. The only problem with that is it was really hard to find anybody who would process waterfowl. I looked all throughout New England trying to find somebody and I, I didn't have any luck. You know, I found lots of people who did chickens, lots of people who did turkeys, but nobody to do waterfowl. So despite my best efforts, I gave up on my dream of finding a professional processor, a USDA inspected facility, that sort of thing. And I opted for a local mobile butcher. Now mobile butchers are those dudes who drive around in trucks. They've got everything that you need in terms of processing a bird, the you know, cones, the scalder, the plucker, you know, they're great at eviscerating. And so I opted to go that route. And I got to admit, I kind of regret it now. The night before, I actually had to separate and herd the geese. So what I did was I took the five geese that I wanted to keep and I funneled them all into one of the chicken tractors. I gotta say that separation process was really sad to me. The five geese that I hung on to and, and kept out here in the pasture that night seemed so sad and, and a little scared by the whole experience. They, they really wanted to be with the rest of their flock, um, but it was a necessary thing to do. I'm hanging on to those five right now because I wanna have breeding stock for future generations. And then I took the remaining 26 geese and I herded them up to the front of the house to the other two chicken tractors. Before you butcher animals, you don't want to uh, feed them the night before, generally speaking. Uh, it just makes the uh, gutting process a lot grosser. And so I kept them in those chicken tractors close to the house overnight. The geese that were closer to the house, they were generally okay. They were a little cranky that they weren't getting fed, but they were happy to all be together. All ducks go to bed! All ducks go to bed! All ducks go to bed! So sadly, tonight is also Samuel Puddle Duck's last night on the farm. He's an older duck, he's been having some health problems, and it's just time for him to go. I felt like it was better to keep him with the rest of his family than try to separate him out. So out of solidarity, I'm not feeding the ducks tonight. That way they can have one last night all together.
People are often surprised when I explain that most of my diet is a vegetarian, meaning like I really only will eat meat if I raised it myself or if one of my friends raised it or if I know the farm and I'm really comfortable with their farming practices. And people are surprised by that, but it's being here and working with these guys and doing all of this that really makes me appreciate the cost of meat and what goes into producing ethical meat. And uh, that's curtailed my meat intake significantly. Morning chickens. Huh? Morning. Come on chickens. Come with me. Chick 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 so when I made this plan to bring on the mobile butcher and I made the reservation, the plan had originally been for them to show up like in the morning and I would take a full day to process them and get everybody bagged and separated and, and set. But the night before I butchered, I got a call from the, the mobile butcher and they said, oh, we're gonna do another job earlier in the morning so we won't show up until three o'clock. This really didn't make me happy, I gotta admit, because, uh, you know, look, it's getting dark by seven o'clock and I knew that the 26 geese and one duck that we were gonna process was gonna take a lot longer than, you know, two hours or so. And I knew I needed a couple hours to bag because the, the way the relationship works with the mobile butcher is I was responsible for wrangling the birds and bringing them up to the cone and getting them set there. And then the mobile butcher would handle killing them, bleeding them, scalding them, plucking them, and gutting them. But then that gut bird, I was responsible for taking and putting it into the bag and getting it prepped and ready for refrigeration and freezing and ultimately sale. So I knew I needed a couple of hours to do this. And so I even lined up a buddy of mine to come and help me that morning. But unfortunately, he had something he had to do later that day and wasn't going to be able to participate. So that meant that we were starting late and I didn't have any help. Like I said, this story isn't exactly going to a place where I wanted it to go. <laughs> How you doing, Pablo? Huh? How's it going, my friend? Yeah? You enjoying this nice, beautiful fall morning? I know the ducks sure are. The butcher and his assistant, they were really good, nice people. I, I enjoyed talking to them. They were definitely experienced when it came to the whole butchering process. The first animal that we butchered on the farm that day was actually a duck. It was Samuel Puddle Duck. As I was carrying him up to the butcher stand, I really felt that one, but I also know deep down that it was, it was definitely the right thing to do. We actually uh, had a dinner over at our house last night and had a whole bunch of friends come over and, and hosted the, the feast of uh, St. Samuel the Puddle Duck as a way to try to remember him and honor him and take full advantage of his life. I know that there's probably some wacky vegans out there that are watching this video and are gonna leave me all sorts of nasty comments and, and be very upset, but when you eat meat and you raise meat, you have to appreciate that sacrifice that those animals make. And sometimes you have to sacrifice animals that you personally have grown an affection for. And that's just frankly part of the experience. So after Samuel, we focused on the geese. And this is where the story gets disappointing for me. The mobile butcher, Dan, and, and his assistant, they, they were really nice people and, and they were professionals. They knew what they were doing. But one of the things that they'd warned me was that when they plucked the geese, they wouldn't be 100% clean. And by clean, I mean having all the feathers removed. And so I knew that this was gonna be the case. When we plucked our ducks last year, we had huge problems with that. And I just figured, hey, Hopefully they'll do a better job than we did. But the unfortunate thing was, these geese were not coming out clean. In fact, they had a lot of feathers, even more feathers than our ducks last year. And this for me was absolutely heartbreaking because my entire business plan was predicated on the idea of having nice, clean birds that I could sell. I mean, I pre-sold a number of our geese and I knew in good conscience I couldn't sell these to people at the price that I was charging. And so things were not going as smoothly as I hoped. And now my entire business plan with this issue was starting to blow up. And I was just bummed. I was just sincerely bummed. 
But we continued on processing all the geese because at this point there wasn't much else I could do. They were, they were getting butchered. We were scalding them. We were plucking them. We were using Dawn soap. We were doing everything we possibly could to try to get those feathers out and uh, it just wasn't coming out as clean as I would have liked. When I was considering doing this butchering, I, I was looking at using a hot wax method where you almost like give the, the birds a, a bikini wax. Rip the feathers out with some paraffin wax. And I, I really considered this method. I opted not to do it because it seemed like it was too complicated and too much work. Um, but I gotta say, I now at this point really regret that decision. I mean, as I'm checking off my list of missteps, right? Not going to uh, inspected processor was probably mistake number one. But part of the reason none of the processors would accept me was because they all struggle to pluck ducks and geese. And so they don't want to process waterfowl. Step number two was opting for this mobile method, but doing it in a lazy way. I think if I had actually tried to do the wax method, I could have, I could have been a little bit better off. But then misstep number three, which was trying to do the processing too late in the day. Ugh, that's where things really turned bad because um, Dan had finished up his work by about seven o'clock, but by that point it was starting to get really dark. And on top of it all, we were forecasted rain. And so that meant as I was trying to dry off the birds and bag them up and, and heat shrink them and the bags and everything, rain started to pour down. And it was just a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, here I was trying to finish processing and get everything wrapped up and ready for some sort of sale, even if it meant having to negotiate a lower price with my customers. Um, and and this next thing was happening and, and it was just a struggle. And so what I did was I rounded up all of the geese that had not been bagged yet, um, put them in our refrigerator unsealed and unbagged and just kept them in there overnight and and it wasn't until the next day that i was actually able to pull them back out dry them all off seal up their bags and get it all ready and then let them rest in the fridge and then ultimately bring them down into the freezer so it just it didn't go well it didn't go smoothly at all farming sure is a tough business <laughs> hey guys between the fact that it's going to be a lot harder to sell all my geese as well as the fact that I had to do a price cut and I'm not gonna make as much money as I thought I was gonna make. Overall, I'm still feeling good about doing the goose venture this year. This was just my first year of trying to raise geese and I feel like I've learned so much and there's so much that I'll do differently with these guys. I also believe that with goose farming, it's potentially a thing that could really transform agriculture. I think if more people got into it and if there were better methods of harvesting them, um, it could make quite the difference. I mean, they are such a more sustainable bird versus turkeys or chickens or ducks. They require so much less grain. They are grazers. Those facts alone have me really believing this. And so um, to the question, well, will you raise geese again next year? I think the answer is probably 100% yes. I, I mean, I don't know what else to say. I, I have the five that I have now and I wanna to try to hatch out more next year and I'll probably buy more um, goslings and, and bring them onto the farm. I think so often in my own head, I, I act as if I should get everything just right and nailed that first time I try something. And that if I stumble in the early days of learning something new and trying something new and experimenting, I should see that as a personal failure. But I don't. I know that this is gonna take years of practice and experimentation to get this whole goose thing right. And I'm the type of stubborn and patient person who's gonna keep practicing and keep working on this until I can get it right. Even though I've had a couple customers walk away from the unplucked birds, there's been several customers that have said, oh, it's fine, I really want those birds because I like the way you've raised them. And on top of it all, even if I'm left with a, a lot of birds in the freezer, that's still food for me and my wife and our friends and family. And the idea of being out here and raising our own food is one of the reasons why we're doing all of this. And so 
Like I said, even though the commercial things weren't necessarily a success this year or aren't looking like they're gonna be a success this year, I'm gonna keep trying and keep doing this because I think there's just so much potential. But now what I've gotta do is work on integrating the geese and the ducks as one flock and move them all up to that brand new duck house you see up there because that's gonna be the next step.